All right, today we're going to talk about how we can find out and how much we can find out and what it takes to get there. So first we have to decide how much do we want to find out. So let's say in this case, I want to find out at a level of seven. Okay, so I find that level on my graph and I come horizontally to my gradient line. Where it intersects with my gradient line, I'm going to come straight down to where it intersects with my around line. That there is going to tell me how much I have to around to find out what I need to find out. See, as you can see, the more you around, the more you're going to find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never around, you'll never find out. So I hope this lesson is helpful. Thank you. NerdErotic.com Greetings, you over 827,000 practitioners of common sense. You're brilliant, by the way. And the 40% who haven't subscribed yet, you're not so bad either. Let's talk about Netflix's biggest failure, The Witcher. Hmm. But let's briefly go back in time to 2019, a time before COVID. There was a pretty good economy. Game of Thrones just ended in disaster, opening the door for possibly a new fantasy series. Enter The Witcher. Everyone has been wondering, what are we going to do now that Game of Thrones has completed its run? Well, we have the answer for you. It's called The Witcher. Despite casting fan favorite and fan of the books and games, Henry Cavill, there was still a lot of skepticism. There was the additional diverse and inclusive casting that may reflect the Netflix HR department, but didn't really reflect the source material. For me... Uh, it is all about the books. I'm always of the mind, if it's not broken, don't try and fix it. And I don't think they're broken. And um, I absolutely love those books. Um, obviously, it's a book that was written uh, at a certain time. Um, it, was a, it was written by a Polish author. And I had a feeling that most people imagine these characters to be white only. I am trying to tell stories where um, other people who may have had my experience can also find themselves in The Witcher. And that includes making characters um, have different skin colors than perhaps uh, fans imagined. It's a big part of the pop culture history of Poland, which is also, I think, quite important. In many ways, the Witcher world has a very European basis. We wanted to give the continent a slightly more global feel. Which tends to be a major red flag when it comes to the approach to the source material. There was the Nilfgaardian ball sack armor. What do they look like, Jimmy? Dorks. <laughs> they look like a couple of dorks. <laughs> Yet prior to the show's release, showrunner Lauren Hisrick tried to quell some of that skepticism and made a statement that sounded pretty good. Will I move through the book and start changing people's cultural heritage and ethnic makeup or gender because I'm feeling really liberal that day? No, that's ridiculous. And contrary to what any writer would do, because we are storytellers, story comes first. Well, it turns out that this was only one of the first signs that Lauren Hisrick has a little problem telling the truth. And to borrow a phrase from the fantasy series that The Witcher hoped to be someday, words are wind. Can we get some cash money now? Uh, plenty dollars. Plenty dollars. Still, season one was a massive success, one of the most watched shows on Netflix, and maybe they did have their Game of Thrones. Um, it's very flattering. Uh, I don't know if it's a fair comparison yet, time will tell, because uh, the only comparison you can truly make is popularity and how well this does uh, versus how well that does. Unfortunately, it was all downhill from there. There's an old book out there that says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Was season one successful because of Henry Cavill, despite the writers and the producers from Netflix, or... Was The Witcher Season 1 successful because of the writers and producers from Netflix, despite Henry Cavill? If you chose the latter, then you're probably a writer and producer for The Witcher on Netflix. How dare you! Season 1 of The Witcher had an 89% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, which was higher than the critic score. Then Season 2 dipped almost 50% to 56%. And Season 3 has dipped more than 50% from the 56% at 22%. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. And let's keep in mind, after the success of season one, there was all this talk of a seven season plan, which looks like it's been abandoned. One that Henry was down with initially on one condition. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter in November 2021, Cavill said he was absolutely committed to telling Geralt's story for seven seasons on one condition, as long as we keep telling great stories which honor Sapkowski's work. I think they're ready for us. 
Well, I'm, I'm ready also. <laughs> For what? <laughs> you know what? We're going to discover together. Well, Lauren Hisrick has said quite a bit over the last few years, and it turns out the vast majority of it is bullshit. So it would be a straight translation of the books. You know, I just think there's so much material. Um, that I don't feel the need to start inventing my own to keep it going. She also said The Witcher Season 3 will be very close to the books, except when it isn't. And we were told Henry Cavill would get a heroic send-off. To be fair, I do believe Lauren was being 100% honest when she was begging fans to come back to the show after Henry left. Netflix, like Amazon with the Rings of Power, did end up getting their Game of Thrones, except they went straight to season eight. And just to pile on a little bit more, those audience scores are reflected on other review aggregates like IMDb and Metacritic, which are all time lows for the series. And if that wasn't enough for Lauren Hisrick and her crack team of writers who are smoking crack, season three, part one of The Witcher lost 50% of its audience from episode one to episode five. Now you could just chalk this up as another show that had a pretty decent season one and then just fell off a cliff like Westworld, Altered Carbon, Umbrella Academy, or even going back to Heroes. The only difference is a lot of the fans saw this one coming a mile away. And now that part two has come out, it is indeed a fart in the wind. And you can tell I'm putting off even wanting to talk about it because I freaking hated it. Now there might be others, but I can't think of a TV series that fell from grace so fast and hard. All I know is I went from the piece of crap secret invasion finale right into the hot garbage that was the last three episodes of The Witcher, keeping in mind that the writers of both shows are currently on strike because because they want more money. Just like with the Rings of Power last year, to a lesser extent, The Witcher Season 3 has united the internet. These are the f roundest of times and the find outest of times. And I do find it interesting, although this wasn't intended, that the title of the sixth episode of Season 3 describes everything that's going on with Netflix, The Witcher, Lauren Hisrick, and Henry Cavill. Everyone has a plan until you're punched in the face. Boy, what was that for? As with this entire series, The Witcher Season 3 Part 2 could be summed up with this. They're all searching for you, Siri. Princess Serena! Siri! Siri! Where's the girl? Where's Siri? He's looking for Siri. I need to find Siri. Where is Cirilla? Have you seen Cirilla? Siri! Siri! Where are you, Siri? Siri, Siri, are you here? We're looking for Siri. Where's Siri? For the sake of your valuable time, and more importantly, your sanity, as well as mine, we're going to get through this as fast as possible. As you may or may not recall, because you probably didn't watch the show, we left off The Witcher Season 3 Part 1 with a banquet, with repeated scenes and repeated dialogue to make it look smart. The mages were conclaving, and apparently, all is not what it seems. How did I know that? It seems. This brings us to the dinner theater adaptation of the Thanic Coup. Round one, fight! Hadouken! And there's a big battle between the Conclave mages, Redania, who in this show I like to call Retardia, and the Skyatel, who are the elves under the orders of Nilfgaard. And everybody's there, including, but not limited to, Tessaia, Francesca, Margarita, Philippa, Sabrina, Triss, Frangilla and her COVID weight. Sure, there's a couple of dudes as well, including Kahir and Philavandril, who ends up getting blown up. The best description will be women and some men fight some women and some men. Most of the men die, women most affected. You know who wasn't at the coup? Siri, who got abandoned by her babysitter Yasker so he could have some gay love. Yennefer was able to easily escape the coup to find Ciri in the middle of nowhere to abandon her once again to go girl boss at the coup. Geralt, of course, sat the entire thing out, but not to worry. He finally got his big battle, the battle they have been building up to for almost an entire episode. Geralt of Rivia and Velgefort's beach off. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beach you off right now, Ken. If I'll beach off with you any day, Ken. Hold my ice cream, Ken. All right, Ken, you're on. Let's beach off. Geralt gets his ass handed to him, and I shit you not, he gets sidelined for the final two episodes. Geralt is taken to broccoli. Chop broccoli. 
I'm sorry, the female utopia of Brocklin, where the hippie ladies heal him, and he's in this episode for about three minutes. And the rest of this hour-long episode is Siri wandering around the desert being stalked by the goddess of angry feminism, Falka. Powerful women have been labeled insane since the dawn of time. That's bullshit. Always has been, always will be. Just in case you didn't get it the first 10 or 20 times in this series, Siri is the girl who is the key to everything. One of the more important things about Siri is that we will slowly discover that she's the main character of the Witcher saga. Not Geralt, not Yennefer, it's Siri's story. You are the key to everything, Cyrilla. That's right, Siri has finally taken center stage from Yennefer. And in Henry Cavill's final episode of The Witcher, he spends the vast majority of it in physical therapy. Sure, by the very end of the episode, he ends up healed, teaming up with Yasker and my producer X-Ray Girl, I'm sorry, Milva. And in Henry Cavill's final battle in the Witcher series, he kills a bunch of MILF guardian goons who stole a girl's doll. And of course, at the end of the fight, he has to be saved by my producer X-Ray Girl, I'm sorry, Milva. And that's it for Henry Cavill as far as the rest of the cast. Yasker is still gay, Yennefer is still a girl boss, Radovid becomes king, and the lost Siri is found and saved by a bunch of adolescent cosplayers who cut through men twice their size like butter. And the only character to make a logical decision in this show as a surrogate for the audience is to Sarah when she ends it all. And Henry Cavill is free from this intersectional feminist fever dream. And sure, I have some questions that'll never get answered, and honestly, I don't care. How did Frangilla and her COVID wait find her way to the coup when the last time we saw her, she was drunk in a tavern? How does Kahir, who has been searching for Siri this entire series, just randomly run across her and then heel turns? begs for forgiveness, begs to be killed, and when she doesn't do it, he runs off to save her from his own people and says, I'll see you later. How are people able to come and go as they please during this elaborate coup? And what's up with very natural redhead Deus Ex Triss, who came out of nowhere to save Yennefer and later save Geralt? Guess she's just hanging out waiting to save people when the script calls for it. And how in the hell did she get him to Broccoli? How could anyone responsible for the show Blood Origin, which severely alters the lore, and then they connect it directly to The Witcher, who has lied to the audience multiple times following failure with another abysmal failure, still keep her job? I always like... My highly weaponized autistic research team has crunched the numbers and I have the total screen time of Henry Cavill's Geralt of Rivia. Total running time for episodes one through five, not counting credits, is four hours and 35 minutes. Geralt's screen time was 73 minutes, 24.8 seconds. Henry Cavill is only on screen for 27.97% of season three, part one. As far as season three, part two is concerned, it's even worse. Total runtime for episodes six through eight, not counting credits, is two hours, 30 minutes, and 31 seconds. Henry Cavill's total screen time, 25 minutes and three seconds. That means Henry Cavill is only in 16.67% of the final three episodes. So it won't surprise you at all to hear again that these are some of the lowest rated Witcher episodes ever and some of the worst episodes of TV I've seen in years. Long story short, these three episodes were hot garbage, blood origin bad. They were incomprehensible, illogical, contrived, the worst kind of fan fiction that gives fan fiction a bad name. But don't feel bad if you have trouble with this show because you didn't read the books or play the games. You would only be slightly more lost than the people who read the books and played the games. The Witcher was done the very second Henry Cavill announced he was leaving and we are simply here observing the inevitable and chronicling its demise. But not to worry, Witcher producer Tomek Baginski has an explanation as to why his show sucks. It's our fault. From Forbes, The Witcher producer blames stupid Americans and emotional young people for the show's failures. That's f hard it. Yet, the universe unfolds as it should, and thanks to the Writers Guild and Film Actors Guild strike, the Witcher season four has been delayed indefinitely. Far be it from me to give a multi-billion dollar corporation unsolicited advice from my spare bedroom surrounded by my plastic pals, but what the hell? Cancel this show. But if you don't, as sure as the sun is gonna rise in the east, the Marvels is gonna flop this November and the Rings of Power season two is gonna suck. The Witcher is still dead, and this may come as a shocker to you, Netflix, but I'll keep it as simple as possible for all the stupid writers and emotional producers working on this show. It turns out the audience wants to see The Witcher 
in The Witcher Show. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerdorotic.com. Please subscribe.